Hi everyone, welcome to this little video about the new library from AudioBro, the MSS. Now, uh, when last came out, it was great for me because as I'm a piano player, um, having both hands on the keyboard and uh, the arc tool from the last would split uh, the chords you would do to different DVZs and I could almost play the keyboard and I could sometimes leave it like that or then uh, layer it with other libraries or just split the DVZs and go one by one to improve the orchestration. So that was a very, very interesting tool. The only thing for me, the LAS had a very close type of mic. It had a bit of harshness. I would struggle to get some, something a bit softer, although I had the, also the, the Sordino library and the, whatever the reverb. I couldn't get the depth and the width uh, that I would like to use. And modern library from ADO to Spitfire would have that thing. So I think that's why AudioBro now have updated that to this modern scoring strings and this is not going to be a, an in-depth uh, uh, study of all the articulation of this i think the the the, the, the demos they have online are, are wonderful uh, but just a quick overview from the user point of view right so they did it honestly there's three mics you have a mixed version i'm going to talk about that a little bit and uh, the sound is just amazing. But when I've been listening to the demo, I was thinking, am I going to put more money in this? They have a good upgrade, I don't know how you call it, from people uh, who, had, who had less, and that was a good idea because I wouldn't have paid full price for, for, for this. Not that it isn't a bad product, but I have no idea how many lab library I bought <laughs> from, from the last uh, 20 years, and it's uh, you gotta stop at some point. Because I was listening to the um, Audio Bro uh, demo from the MSS and I was thinking okay all right I hear the sound I like it clearly I would start from scratch I would go for that library but I already have a lot of things and that type of sound I can achieve it this way or this way and that's when they did this video with the ostinatos and this articulation I cannot do it with any library I know so honestly I, I don't know about the new Vienna uh, and how maybe they they have some great articulation for this. I know that ADO has an ostinato library. They have different things actually, different tools, and it doesn't. I mean, around you can work around the corner and get something working. Uh, and the demo they have about the ostinato is just amazing. And the feeling you have when you use it, it's just exactly what it is on the video. You just hit the chords and wow, that it works, uh, the dynamics are working. I'm just telling you about my impression. You can see here on on my uh, new endo there, there's already some tracks with some, uh, a MIDI track I recorded. This is six notes, uh, little chords, different registry. I'm going high, low, and there's a CC following. I just wanted to try the legatos, right? And the bad news is I got to change that computer, okay? So in the last, I like to use the master patch where you would just hit chords and have from bass to violins, all the strings playing and the DVZ following your idea. So there I went with the uh, MSS to their Ensemble patch. The biggest one called Ensemble MSS. There is no way I make it work. There's another one called uh, smaller footprint and that's the one I left here and there's another one lucky that's called a smallest footprint but if you want the full thing you need a new updated powerful computer uh, let's just play that thing so you will see here I'm using close and surround mics there's a bit of the sense but there's no reverb actually so there's it's gonna be dry and there's a bit of EQ and I think the EQ they do are smart I'm just leaving them uh, here so let's play this and you're gonna hear some drop out, sorry.
So there you go, I warned you, but I just wanted for you to hear, unfortunately, <laughs> an ensemble uh, struggling, right? So uh, this computer is 10 years old. Still, I've been doing, and still recently, some big soundtrack with a lot of tracks and video and sound because sometimes I'm also doing the sound and I keep the sound for the film, the, all, all my en ensemble instruments and it's, it's working. So uh, 32 gigabytes, it's an i7 2600K. It's a bit uh, overclocked, I don't remember the specs. So it's an old computer, it's still working, but clearly not for that uh, library. Uh, I have to use the smallest patch to get it working. And I think it's still possible. This smaller footprint ensemble, uh, you can see I have the release tail activated, that doesn't help. I'm using the vibrato also. And um, the memory has been managed here. You have a tight switcher. If you activate it, it's going to load all the different uh, tiles that you see here in the menu and they are preloaded so you just have to skip through them. My RAM is the same for whatever ensemble I've been working with previously, but the MSS requires a lot of RAM. This is a 32 gigabytes, but it's a 1,303 whatever megahertz uh, RAM, so it's an old RAM too, it doesn't load that fast. And because I was in a rush to try it, I just installed everything on the normal hard drive, so that's not an SSD bad choices everywhere but at least now you know <laughs> what it is to get that um, library on an um, average low computer right but the good news is just the sound uh, is insane let's listen to the close mics but these are demos you can hear on their website better So you can see only with these chords that I'm hitting 400 voices. That's a lot. And I think that the mute, if the mics are activated, the sounds are played. And it's mute like a normal mixing desk, or at least a virtual one. But it doesn't stop the samples from being played, which would have been smart, I think. Uh, if you listen to the surround, the surround on its own doesn't work that much. It's not intended to, I think. It does work. Now I have some headphones, but I had the feeling on my speakers that the surround alone would miss the center, really, it's wide. And it's it's great because you can combine it with close mics. Sorry, the stage is not loaded there. Let's click on it. So that's it, we're loaded. Uh, let's listen to the stage. Oh, that's the close actually. So there again, you can see where hard drive and drops out, dropouts are, are occurring. But if you've paid attention, I activated the EQ, it was off on this one. And I think it's a smart EQ they have, it's a, a two kilo, kilohertz, they have minus two. It removes a little bit of harshness, but we can't say that the library is as, as harsh as the last. The stage sounds great. I mean, the mics are wonderful. The sound of the library is, is absolutely great. I'm super excited to use it. It just motivates me now to get another computer because that's going to be super, super creative. I mean, if you have a computer that's capable of handling the three mics and you just do your, your, your mix, and it's an amazing tool. The stage on its own is wonderful. If you listen to the original last, which is not a, I mean, it's 
it's really not the same product plus the MIDI I played for MSS I just dropped it on last just to see how it sounded and it was not meant to be like this because the, the articulation and the velocity doesn't work the same with the with the last let's just play it for fun So it's very dry uh, and so there's a little harshness that I really never managed to, to, to remove. Still, it's a great library, uh, I, I like it, but it's quite narrow in terms of width. And again, I try to work on that. You can obviously take all your divs and space them a little bit, but just hit the chord on the MSS and you just get this, this depth and width, it's just absolutely wonderful the thing with the last when i was using the last i always had to combine the cc1 and the cc11 to get a bigger uh, range in dynamic and i always played with both uh, i always played like i would uh, lower a bit cc1 to 50 percent cc1 to zero and as i push CC1, I would increase CC, increase CC11. And um, ADO has a trick like this where you can link both, but they're link in a one-to-one -one ratio. So it's better to have them manually and you would just push one more than the other. Where I realized with um, MSS, the CC1 on its own has a wider range. See. So, the range on the CC1 is, is quite good. I might use CC11, but really less than what I was doing, this 50% thing. You'll see that there's a lot of volumes <laughs> button. There's one here, there's one over there, and basically, and you have also your master volume. So this one is, what is, is this one is the CC7, is it? This one is the CC11 expression. And uh, this one is per tile, so each tile can have a different volume so that when you layer them, which obviously I'm not going to do since it's already struggling with one tile, so you can manage your, uh, your layers of volume, which is cool because you can have legatos with a bit of trills maybe. Everything here is dry, the last you've been listening to also is dry. And I've been going through a little bit of the um, convolution reverb they propose here. There's a lot of choice, obviously. You have uh, parameters you can work on, but also look at all you have here. So before I say I don't like them, I'll have to go through all of this. But uh, just the basic one here is this Convo 3. All of, look, this is the stage, and it's going like this, minus 10 sent to Convolution 3, which is this LA verb. verb. This is activated now, so let's listen to this. Just going to the, yeah. So I have to stop, I have to stop playing this ensemble. We have too many drops out, drop out. Uh, I left it for you to see what it is. So even trying the reverbs is super annoying. So let's cut this and see the other ensemble they propose. 
if you're struggling like me, it's this smallest footprint. So that would work. I'm going to load this one, which is the smallest footprint. I'm going to pause the video a little bit while it's, um, it's loading. No, while it is actually, I'm going to tell you uh, a struggle I had with Downloader from Audio Bro. Hopefully they fixed that, but you can see on the forum people are struggling. So it took me 36 hours before I have the first sound coming out of the computer because all the downloading process you get, you need to request an unblock, login, whatever, and then you have 60 parts of four gigabytes that I had to download and restart the download app each time. So that was hard. And once that's there, you gotta, um, you have to read the manual. There's a lot of information, great information in the manual. And one is you got to batch resave all your ensembles. So you got to select here, uh, go to batch resave. And I'm not going to do that else. It's going to close the ensemble. It's just batch resave all the library, all the ensembles. And that takes a while. So here we go. We have here this version. So this is the smallest footprint. What it is exactly, I haven't been through the manual about this. Uh, we still have the uh, um, release tails that I'm going to activate. Release, release tails are, are, are wonderful. Let's, let's, let's hear that. Play a chord. Let's hit uh, C minor. Let me check where is the convolution. So here I have this convolution that I'm going to remove the C minor and the release you make sounds like this and without there's a cut <laughs> it's like the sound engineer is just cutting down the the faders it's super hard especially if you have no reverb right so if and that's the moment maybe to check the reverb I like from Valhalla. So it's the vintage verb, 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 how you pronounce, I don't know. Let's put that setting, is it activated? Yes, and the same C minor with no release tail. So obviously, if you have a reverb like that, 20%, a bit less, you might want to spare these samples. It's not only the memory, because I don't think that these are long sounds, but it's it, it, it doubles the moment you release your, your, your chord, it doubles the number of voices. So that's why you hit, the, the, this is, I haven't changed the max settings 400, but few chords and you get way above 400. I leave it there because anyway, my computer, drops out before. So C minor, release tail and reverb. So yeah. So yeah, if you want to, to spare a bit of voices, it's it's good to remove that if if you have the, the, the reverb. Yeah, what else is coming to my mind? Oh of course. <laughs> In the last you had to buy the Sordino library on top of the normal strings. Here they come in the library and you have quite a choice because you go Sul Tasto, Sul Pont. So Sordino here, let's put the same, uh, remove the verb, active the release tail and So the smallest footprint, if I load one mic, 
I think it's I can I can with without the release tail. That's how I'm gonna work. <laughs> that's how I'm gonna work. Sultan store. So that's great. With a bit of reverb, it's just magical. Intuition series are super interesting. They explain how it works on the website and it does what it's meant to do, uh, which is I've rarely had that precision in some fast playing using uh, only an orchestra library without layering it myself with a solo or even some little synthesizers that would push transitions and things like that. But I would layer stuff I have on my analog synthesizer here, some patches that are specific for like push spiccatos and, and improve some, some fast uh, path passages. But I think the, the intuition series, they, they did a good job there also. So yeah, good. There's one thing I want to mention actually, which is super nice. I don't remember seeing that on other libraries, but again, I'm not uh, aware of, for example, what Vienna has released in their new version. And I'm sure these are smart guys too, but the scales, you have a feature here where this sub menu, you can select start end. And that's just amazing. That's just so, so convenient where you want to fix like we were in C minor and I want to do that. So you, you hit the starting note and the ending note. I mean, I've been always struggling. The Vienna, the runs I have in any library are just pre-recorded runs. And uh, you have to deal with where it's ending, where it starts, and sometimes it's not very well lab labeled and you don't exactly know that you have to struggle with the note, which one is ending really, because sometimes it's a bit messy with your reverb and it's just like, here you just hit the starting you can see on the keyboard there the starting the ending note and you get you have it right so you get the octave or just a few that's it's an improvement in my workflow let me check this with changing the tempo here because so this is now 100 and say 50 how's that working there so is it adapting? Yes, yeah, speed, auto mode. I gotta check that. And uh, times two is gonna be weird. All right. I'm not sure about how the tempo is working there. Yes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> of course. So this is not just a simple recorded run. It follows the tempo. The ostinatos are, are just absolutely wonderful. The only thing is you have to anticipate a lot your playing. could see wait let me put it lower so 
So this is something you have to, to practice a little bit because maybe you can hear with the mic. I really hit the chord way in advance. So yeah, uh, it's, uh, you have to work a little bit on that, but the feeling of just hitting a chord. That's just intense. I mean, if you think about the hours I, I wasted trying to get that result with whatever the trick I forgot because I gave up on that way of of writing because if you don't have a, a real musician doing that thing there is no way and yes there is, <laughs> no, there is. do I have any reverb because I'm just yeah we have a bit of reverb that helps in this type of things but even dry you can see let me check also that there's nothing on the buses there that's how I'm going to work so because <laughs> there's no way I, I activate the other guys over here I like also how they organize the shorts so I already mapped some CC for me I never had in other libraries a slider to skip through the articulations right so for example everything I see in um, ADO is with a key switch yeah, the Vienna, I think you can you, know, you can organize your cells and just have a slider going through the, through your cells. So you can do that with a, the with a Vienna, but I've never you really used it. And on their demo, is the first time I saw that on the Audio Broad demo, and I thought, yeah, that's, that's a nice way to, to use it. So they have this thing where they go... Uh, I tried to play it like this, but look, that's working, right? So... So you're trying to lower your, your articulation while playing and really there's a wonderful demo where you can have fast passages on the spiccato and the martelli just to stop the thing. If you use the um, speed here, it works but it's always one hit late because it, uh, the algorithm works with uh, what you just played previously. So. Maybe it's a, it's a good way to just go. No, it's always late. So I don't, I, I don't see how they would make it work. So maybe in some, some context it, it works. But the moment you go, bam, 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 it's always late. You want, you want the speaker to go, and here you don't have it. Where if you use the slider, you can go, you can do that. Uh, where is it? No, which slider? This one. Uh, Ah, that's wonderful. That's super interesting. So yeah, lots of good things. That's not a surprise for Mojo Pro because um, LAS was clearly a, a good tool intended to uh, write music for orchestra and they have nice tricks embedded to, to help you. And now I think they really combined not only a good writing tool, but also a good sounding tool. That's just uh, uh, my impression. I'm going not even under the hood here, but for example, the, the dynamics here, you have this dynamic smoothing. You can combine the CC and the velocity or just the CC only. Uh, the volume range can be adjusted. I have no idea what that means, but I, I'm pretty sure <laughs> it's interesting to go into this. So yeah, amazing library. Just get yourself a $5,000 computer and it, uh, it will sound great.